Speaking of housing, uh, Monday, the City Council Rules Committee withdrew a proposal that would impose a 1% to 2% tax on food and beverages sold by businesses such as hotels and restaurants. The additional funds were sought to aid homeless initiatives across the city. Um, do we know who proposed this bill? I think it was Jimmy Peluso, was it not? Was he not the sponsor? It was Jimmy Peluso and Michael Boylan okay. co-sponsored it. Okay. Um, Nate, what ways would these funds have aided uh, homelessness, the, the homelessness initiative? I mean, I think the kind of main point was that this was a potential tool and a, a sustainable funding source that could have been used in a lot of different ways. Uh, I, I think the advocates of this plan kind of deliberately did not get too specific because part of their argument was, look, this is a bill, th this is a, this is legislation that we're, that is necessary for us to ask the legislature to allow us to later levy a tax, right? So, I, I mean, I think they were trying to not get too far ahead of the, of the debate um, that didn't really work. Um, so I, I, I mean, I think it, it probably best viewed at this point as a tool that they wanted on the table and it's not going to be on the table now. You can join the conversation at five, four, nine, two, nine, three, seven. You can tweet us at FCC on air. First close connect at WJCT.org. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You know where to find us. Reach out. We want you to join the conversation. Um, to your point, Nate, do you think that, um, the lack of specifics is part of the reason why it was pulled? No, um, I just think that this city council in its current composition is not a council that is eager to pass any kind of tax or fee increase. We've had a few in the last few years, both on the city side and, and on our public school side. And I, I, even absent those things, I don't think these guys would go for a tax increase. And I, I think it was, as I read the debate, just kind of a bunch of fear mongering about taxes. And that's why it was pulled. I mean, I, I, I don't think it was even necessarily specific to homelessness uh, or homelessness initiatives. In fact, some of the council members not in support of this seemed pretty uh sort of self-aware of uh, about the fact that they might be perceived as shooting down help for uh you know our homelessness problems so i i mean i just think it's a simple matter of the council not wanting to pass a tax increase yeah that's a, that's interesting i think nate's dead on in that that regard i mean anytime you mention the millage rate in jacksonville people go into palpitations so um any sort of discussion of tax increase uh whether it's whether whatever the source of the revenue is is met with stern resistance but I, I what i found interesting about this particular bill was it was actually bipartisan you got michael boylan from mandarin and yeah. you got jimmy peluso with democrat i was thinking that that like it it seems like a very opposite uh perspective perspectives or just, yeah, yeah perhaps um but yeah i mean uh i thought that was positive to be perfectly honest with you i thought it was uh it, it was kind of like as Nate was saying, this was kind of like more of a placeholder. I remember years back when we had to do something about indigent uh, health care, we had to go to Tallahassee and get approval for, you know, get the legislature to approve a local tax or whatever. Um, and it failed, much like this one did. Uh, but uh, it, 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 I don't want to say this was necessarily a placeholder, but it was kind of, it, it did, it did define the issue though. And I think there, you know, I think it opens the door for additional dialogue as to, you know, what are the needs? You know, let's define the needs and what is the funding source? What are we going to do to, 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 to address the situation? We, we talk about downtown development, and I, I think there is a clear and obvious need for a dedicated funding, you know, a, a persistent funding source to deal with the homelessness issue. I will say, talking to enough restaurant owners, though, it's a really hard time to be a restaurant mm -hmm. owner. I mean, post-COVID, frankly, the business has not come back. The, the breakfast and br brunch places actually have kind of bounced back. But if you're a higher-end restaurant your food costs have gone up. Your labor costs have gone up. Hiring people is difficult. Um, and they will say, oh, and yes, they're talking their own book. I get that. But but they will say that anything, just 1% more added to a bill, is going to hurt hurt their bottom line. And it's not a high-margin business. It's a tough business. And um, in some ways, 
they're a sympathetic group when you say, you know, we're going to raise taxes. And they're like, no, don't. They, they they can get they can sway public opinion because, you know, it is a hard thing that they're doing. So, um, you know, it, it, it was a fight that I'm not I'm not actually surprised that those opposed to the tax won. But I, I will say there there needs to be a dedicated source because that's how we deal with right. the problem. Yeah, we well, had a... to be to be to be clear, we we like this term dedicated funding source in the town. That means tax. <laughs> like <laughs> that is it's a euphemism for tax. Mm-hmm. That there is no other thing that can be a dedicated source except a tax. Anything less than that is just you know the council can set discretionary spending year after year for things, but that's not dedicated. That could change at any moment. So like just you know we love to deploy that term, but it means a tax. So. Just wanted to put that out there. Yeah. Uh, to uh, Tim's earlier point, um, we had a roundtable here with uh, restaurant owners uh, in the downtown core. And uh, we didn't talk about this tax specifically, but we talked about uh, the trials and, and, and how hard it is for them to keep their business going. I mean, you know, one of my favorite restaurants went out of business, uh, Black Sheep, uh, mm-hmm. specifically uh, because the, everything is going up in cost. Um, so, I, you know, I, I do think it's fair for them to flag the fact that this tax would hurt them. But then to Nate's point, um, the only way we can get through this issue and, and, and try to figure something out is if there is a dedicated source, which, as Nate, uh, uh, Nate so eloquently said, is a tax. Um, so is, is there anything else before the city council that we know of where they're looking for ways to, um, to address this issue? Well, the council, the last council passed the bill that prohibits you to actively stand on a median and uh, do things. And that mainly is aimed at people who are trying to get money or like the guy I see almost all the time who is weaving these crosses made out of, uh, you know, palm leaves. Which is a dedicated fund now. Yeah. And, and, and I, I have seen yeah. less people standing on medians, but it's still there. So I don't know if JSO is actually that, out there citing, but that is a negative uh, attempt to control. Right. That And, and, and that. That is a uh, that is that law is specifically to uh, cater to um, people who have homes, right? Uh, like where, um, what I, I guess what I'm asking is, is there any movement to help people who are unhoused right now? Because clearly we can not see beyond it. the same can, it, but yeah, not beyond the same stuff the city's been doing for years. I mean, much like. It, in the development world with renderings, the city is very, very good at putting out impressive, exciting reports that then just never really get acted on. And that's kind of where this issue is. Mike from Twitter said rent is still too high and residents are eagerly waiting for proposals on how to deal with the problem. Again, like this is not a scientific uh, survey that I've done, but. I know that we're in a housing crisis, and yet when I drive through uh, different parts of town, I see for rent signs up everywhere. So I, I'm wondering if, like, if if Mike is like hitting on the exact thing that like we are in a housing crisis, but also um, the rents are high and people can't afford it because wages haven't gone up in like forever, right? So like, if if the rents go up and you're still making the same thing that you were making you know, eight to 10 years ago, how are you going to afford it? And and so the question is, what is the city council uh, going to do to end the mayor's office to address that? And then that's part of the problem is that it is a complicated sort of thing. So, so if you talk to landlords, you know, one of the reasons rents are going up is because property insurance is going up. So, you know, that, that seems like we're, you know, we're talking about homelessness and, rents and property insurance, you know, there's a whole line there and you can't just, you can't adjust this one dial. Right. You know, so, so when people say deal with homelessness, to some extent, what they're saying is the state has to do more to deal with the property insurance market because that, that can trickle into actually rents being lower or more properties being developed or things that increase the housing stock that will deal with, with homelessness. So. If that, in fact, is the case, I mean, again, I mean, I, the market is the market. We got more people coming to the state. We got more people coming to the city, right? So the, uh, it, it, Dan said it before, we, we don't have enough housing, right? So, again, it's it's basic supply and demand. I mean, the the, 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 price, the cost will go up, and it it, it it begs the question. I mean, when we're – and I think maybe that was one of the issues that arose with this particular bill was just the, you know, again, what, what are we funding? 
homelessness. Okay, all right, great. Let's define what we're actually talking about. Is it affordable housing? Is it getting people off the medians? I don't know. I mean, these are issues uh, that we would have to address from a policy perspective before any definitive legislation was enacted. So. And Clay County, as well as Jacksonville, both enacted those medians to try to, I believe, stop homeless people from from being out on the street. Don't forget, too, that if you start charging a 2% tax on food and you don't have tourists, you don't get a lot of money. St. Augustine and St. John's County, that's a tourist-based economy. Sure. Here, I don't know, you'd be hitting Joe Sixpack who's going out to dinner with the family. Yes. You can join the conversation at 549-2937. You can tweet us at FCC on air. First Coast Connect at wjct.org. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube. So...